Okay, welcome back everybody to the second lecture of BC 308, Revelation and Daniel. We are in chapter seven and we are reading through it verse by verse. Let's pick up with verse 10, <clears throat> uh, please, of Revelation chapter seven. And uh, we are going to go forward. So, so far, Daniel has shared his vision with us in where he sees, where he has seen these four images of four, four animal-like creatures, these beasts that have come out of the sea, representing the uh, nations, uh, the multitudes of people. And then he is seeing the vision of the ancient of days. He's seeing God and what's going to happen. Let's read verse 10. Somebody could read three verses, please. Verse 10 onwards. And a stream of fire was pouring out from it. There were many thousands of people there, people there to serve him, and millions of people stood before him. The call began its session, and the books were open. While I was looking, I, I could still hear the little horn breaking and posting as I watched the fourth beast was killed, and its body was thrown into the flames and destroyed. The other beasts and their power taken away, but they were permitted to go on living for a limited time. Mm. A season and a time. Okay, so he sees the ancient of, thank you. He sees the ancient of days, that is God. He sees the throne and then he sees like uh, a, a judgment um, session. The books are opened. People, thousands of people are standing before the Ancient of Days. And then this little horn, remember, the little horn that he saw is still speaking boastful things, but this little horn is destroyed. Till the beast was slain. So this is again representing, that horn was representing uh, a, a, a beast. And it was slain. And um, for the rest of the beasts, so he saw four beasts come out, the rest of the beasts. They had their uh, dominion taken away and uh, their lives were, uh, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So the peoples continued for a period of time. We'll come back and interpret this later, okay? I don't want to jump into the interpretation. Uh, I'm just, we just need to understand what he is seeing, okay? Let's continue with that. Uh, verse 13 onwards, three verses, please. As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is internal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Da I, Daniel, was troubled by all I had seen, and my visions terrified me. Okay, verse 16, please. So I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant. He explained it to me like this. Uh, these four huge beasts represent four kingdoms that will arise from the earth but in the end of but in the end the holy people of the most high will be given the kingdom and they will rule over forever and ever mm. okay now it's getting very interesting so he sees all of this and of course, Daniel is troubled. Uh, he's like, okay, what does all this mean? What am I seeing? I see, I've seen this big sea. I've seen the, 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 the winds stirring up the sea. And then I've seen these four beasts coming. 
then from the, the fourth beast, there are 10 horns. And then I'm seeing another horn come. This, this little horn is speaking big things. And this little, little horn overpowers three of the 10 that I saw. It's speaking all these big pompous things. And then I'm seeing, you know, he sees the ancient of days. He's seeing courts, uh, he's seeing a court session, all the people standing before God. And then he's seeing this little horn being destroyed and uh, being thrown into a, a, a burning flame. And uh, then he's seeing the other beasts uh, uh, continuing for a little bit of time. And then he sees... Uh, the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. You know, this is the same. This is verse 13, Daniel 7, verse 13. This is the same language Jesus used when he was speaking to the people in, in his earthly ministry. He, says, he said many times, you will see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. Exactly those words from Daniel 7, 13. So the Jewish people who knew the scriptures knew what he was talking about. He was referring to himself as this son of man that Daniel had prophesied or written about. You will see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. Hey, this is Jesus. Hey, Jesus used the same thing about himself. So uh, this son of man, verse 14, he receives all the power and all the dominion, right? He receives all of that. Now, Daniel is grieved, he's troubled. So what does all this mean? And then uh, one of, you know, perhaps it must have been one of those angelic beings that he's seeing standing by the throne and gives him the interpretation. It says, Daniel, verse 17, those great beasts, so now we're getting the meaning. They are representing four kings and kingdoms. Kingdoms. So four kingdoms. Now, if you compare this, which you know we'll, we will do towards the end of this chapter, if you compare this with what Daniel saw earlier, in, I mean, the, the what Nebuchadnezzar saw in chapter two, you will see parallels, right? parallels. So four kingdoms, four kings and their kingdoms. The beasts, each one of the beasts represents four kings and their kingdoms, which come out of the earth and is among the people. Verse 18, can we, let's go on from, and verse 18, but the saints of the most high, that means God's people, they will receive the final kingdom, which they will possess forever and ever. And there, that kingdom of the, of the Messiah is going to be that kingdom that endures forever and ever. And the saints are going to be part of that. Okay. Verse 19. Let's read on, please. Then I, know, I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the other exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of the horn that had eyes and a mouth that speak with great things, whose look was more sought than his fellows. I behold, beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 onwards. Until the ancient of days came and judgment and was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be divised, divorced from the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth 
and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. And the ten horns of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the sins of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times and the dividing of time. Come. Good. Now, uh, verse 26 onwards. But then the court will pass judgment and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. Then the sovereignty, power and greatness of all the kingdoms kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will last forever and all rulers will serve and obey him. That that was the end of the vision. I, Daniel, was terrified by my thought and my face was pale with fear. But I gave these things to myself. Mm -hmm. All right. So Daniel is trying to understand, right? So in chapter 7, Daniel has got some understanding, not full, but some that the four beasts are four kings and kingdoms that are going to come out uh, from the nations. But then he's given the assurance that, look, ultimately, uh, there is going to be the kingdom of the Most High, God's kingdom, which will be administered by the saints, God's own people. But in between, something is going to happen. There are going to be these ten horns that come out of the fourth kingdom. And then there's going to be one other horn, little horn, that will come out and overpower three of the kings. And now the horns, he gets an understanding in verse 24 that the ten horns are ten kings who come out of the, they were part of that fourth kingdom. Okay, so they come out of that. So the ten horns are actually ten kings or ten leaders. And then there's going to be another one, another leader arise, another king who will arise, who's going to overpower three of them. It's going to take control of them. And verse 25, this other horn, other leader who comes, he is going to speak pompous, pompous words against the Most High. So we're getting some information about this other leader who's coming. Verse 25. And he is going to persecute the saints of the Most High. That means he's going to persecute, he's going to go after God's people the saints of the Most High. And he's going to try to change times and law. That is verse 25. That means he's going to try to influence the very fabric of what is happening. The, the times and the law. He's going to try to change things, the way things are being done. Uh, what is right, what is wrong, uh, yeah, you know, basically control and dominate the lives of people. And verse 25 also says that the saints will be given into his hand. That means he will be able to persecute the people of God. It's almost like God is abandoning or God is letting this, this, this leader have power over his own people. He's going to trouble them so much. For how long? For a time, times, and half a time. 
one, two and half. That means three and a half. A time, that's one, times, that's two and a half. So for three and a half years, we will, we will, we will see this repeated. So I'm kind of getting ahead a little bit in the interpretation, but you know, more information is going to come to us in the coming chapters that this leader, he is going to speak against God, the Most High. He is going to persecute, trouble the people of God, and they will be given into a sign, meaning God's going to let it happen. But it's only, it's going to be for three and a half years. Time, times, and half a time. That's three and a half years. And then his dominion will end. And like we saw earlier in verse uh, 11, he's going to be thrown into the burning flame. Okay. So Daniel has got this. Now, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead because uh, some information is not given to us yet, but just to uh, give you an idea of, uh, you know, uh, how we understand what we are uh, seeing here and learning here. Uh, I'm going to get ahead and then you know, we, will, we will see it in scripture. Let me uh, share my screen. And this is basically the notes that I've shared with you. All right. So what is Daniel seeing? What we will understand is that, let me make it smaller. Okay, you're able to see my screen. That there is there is parallel between Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7. And more information will come for us in chapter 8 when we understand this. But the image that he saw in chapter 2 parallels these beasts, the four beasts that he saw. Let me make it a little smaller so you can see the full thing. The four beasts that he saw in chapter 7. The head of gold, we already know it's the Babylonian Empire because Daniel said it's the Babylonian Empire. The Breast and arms of silver, we know it's a Medo-Persian empire because in chapter 5, Daniel told King Belshazzar, your kingdom has ended and will be given to the Medes. So the Medes and the Persians, they came in and they overthrew the Babylonian empire. So we know this already. Okay. But now the portions of this image parallels the head parallels the lion with the wings. The chest with arms parallels the bear with three ribs. This, the, the belly and the thigh parallels the leopard with wings that he saw in chapter 7. The, the legs of iron parallels this beast that he saw with ten horns, which was very, very strong and powerful. Then, what we saw in chapter 2 is the feet are a mix of iron and clay. And there are 10 toes. But what he is saying here is, in chapter 7, there are 10 horns that come. And the, the 10 horns, so the 10 toes correspond to the 10 horns. So that means these 10 horns, therefore, are coming out of this a loosely held mix of iron and clay. We are, we are putting these two things together here, right? Which is also correct because it's coming out of this beast. These ten horns are coming out of this beast. 
And then there arises another little horn, we don't know from where, he hasn't told us yet, that overpowers three of these horns. That's what he's told us in chapter 7. And then that little horn is the one that speaks things against God and persecutes uh, the people of God and uh, eventually is thrown in to the fire. And these four beasts, or these four kingdoms, are allowed to continue for some time before they are also are finally uh, ended. That's verse 12 of chapter 7. So there is a parallel here. Now, as of now, till chapter 7, we only know Babylonian Empire and Medo-Persian. Till chapter 7, we know these two empires. We don't have information about these other empires yet. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to pause here and uh, ask, have, uh, is it clear now? Uh, is uh, uh, Everyone is following with, with me so far? The parallel between chapter 2 and chapter 7. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. And one other thing. In chapter 2, he said, he saw this rock coming and crushing everything and becoming a great mountain. Chapter 7, it's amplified for us. I mean, it's made very clear for us. What is that? It is the kingdom of the Most High God, the Ancient of Days, which will be in the hands of the Son of Man, that is Jesus Christ. And it will be the saints of the Most High, that means the people of God, who will be administering that, that, that mountain that covers the whole earth. It will be administered by the saints of the Most High. That is also, we can arrive by putting these two things side by side, chapters 2 and chapter 7. Clear? Any questions? Okay, so now we're going to go into chapter 8. I, I, I didn't give the notes for chapter 8, but that's okay. We're just going to read through it. I'll give you the notes next time. I, I, I plan to you know, at least cover till chapter 7, which we have done. Okay, so let's go into chap chapter 8. Aaron, you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Pastor, I'm so sorry. Uh, think, uh, this chapter 7, verse 25, 25, how can we interpret this uh, scripture, Pastor? Because many, nowadays, uh, many church leaders, they used to misinterpret this uh Verses, uh, I mean this verse. So, uh, yeah, Pastor, how can we? Mm. Okay, so we know, we know Daniel 7, 25. We know he, it is speaking about the Antichrist. Now, why, we, why do we know that? Because there are so many other scriptures, which um, we're going to read some more um, in Daniel itself, when he's going to talk more about this. Uh, this this man who speaks things against God and what he will do. He's going to give us more information in Daniel itself. Then we read, you know, Jesus referred to the same, uh, referring to him as the abomination desolation. Jesus referred to this in uh, Matthew 24, verse 15. Uh, the apostle Paul wrote about it in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And then in Revelation 13 is a, again, once again, the same person, the Antichrist, is referred to. And he, with the same language, he speaks things against God and so on. So we put all these multiple scripture texts and we say, definitely, this person that Daniel is referring to in Daniel 7, which he will explain to us further in the coming chapters, is speaking about the Antichrist. And I think Dan, uh, Revelation 13th chapter would be like, you know, the, the final confirmation that, yeah, this is, he's referred to as the beast. 
Guru does the same thing. He speak, speaks pompous words against the Most High. Uh, chapter 12, in Revelation 12, we see very clearly that he goes persecuting uh, the saints of the Most High, the, um, the Jewish people and everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. Right, Revelation chapter 12, very clear. So we can say with confidence that based on all these references that Daniel 7.25 is referring to the Antichrist. Is that okay? Yes, Master, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to make progress. Now, as we go further, we're going to get a little bit, you know, the, 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 whatever he has shared with us till now about the image of chapter two, the beasts of chapter seven, more information is going to be given to us in the coming chapters. So we'll, we'll be adding it to whatever we have understood so far. Okay, so let's go in uh, to chapter eight. Now, chapter eight, verse one, starts off very much like how chapter seven started. He's saying, in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar. So that means chapter 7 said in the first year. That's 533 BC. Now he's saying in the third year of King Belshazzar. So he's saying, look, I had another vision. And this happened in the third year. So that's 530, um, 35 BC. Uh, this is what. This is the vision Daniel saw, and obviously he had recorded it as he saw it, okay? So this is again very interesting because it's gonna give us more information. Let's read again, three verses each, please, and we will go forward with that. Chapter eight, verse one in the, third, in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time, I saw in the vision, and it just so happened while I was looking that I was in Shusa, the city that which is in the province of Lam. I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted my eyes and saw standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than than the other, and the other higher one came up the lost. Okay, verse four onwards, please. I watched the ram putting with his horns to the west, the north, and the south. No animal could stop him or escape his power. He did as he pleased and grew arrogant. Well, I was wondering what this mean. A goat came rushing out of the waste, moving so fast that his feet didn't touch the ground. He had one prominent horn between his eyes. He came towards the ram, which I had seen standing beside the river, and rushed at him with all his force. Okay, now... Uh, so he's having this vision. Now, uh, one of the things um, is um, in in uh, in in these images, we try to keep the meaning of what we're seeing consistent. So, in chapter seven, verse twenty-four, he said, "The ten horns." represent 10 kings. So for us, horns, we will interpret as kings. Horns as kings. So what is he seeing so far in chapter eight? He sees a ram. Okay, okay it's an animal. Now the beasts in chapter seven represented kingdoms, kings and kingdoms. So we're going to continue with that same uh, meaning, obviously typology. Here again, a ram, it's going to represent a king and a kingdom. And it had two horns, so that means two kings. But one king was higher, meaning more powerful than the other. 
and what was more powerful came out later and it was moving west so that means it started from the east and it was moving it was four it was moving west and north and south so this this ram started in the east and was moving west it was moving north and south and it, it was just doing whatever it wanted to do became great it says then in verse 5 so a goat okay so the beasts are representing kings or kingdoms but this goat had just one horn a notable horn just one but this goat was moving west so that uh, uh, sorry it came from the west sorry verse 5 it came from the west and it started moving towards the horn that means it was moving east because the ram is coming from the east the goat started in the west one notable horn moving east with furious power and it's moving very fast it says verse 6 very fast okay so let's read on verse 7 Yeah, I'll read. And I yeah. saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two arms. There was no power in the ram to withstand him. But the but he cast him down to the ground and trampled him. And there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. Therefore, the male goat grew very great but when he became strong the large horn was broken and in place of it four not a, uh, not able ones um, came up toward the four winds of heaven and out of one of them came little horn which grew exceedingly great toward the south toward the east and toward the glorious land Mm. Okay, so now he's saying, okay, we are seeing this ram, we are seeing this goat. Then this goat comes very powerful and it destroys the two horns that the ram had. It kills the kings, it destroys, this over, overpowers the ram. This goat is moving very fast, it's becoming very strong. But while it is becoming strong, it's one horn, it says there, is broken. The horn representing the king. So the horn, the one horn, was very, was very strong. The large horn is becoming very big, very great, broken. And instead, there are four notable horns that come out of that goat. Four. And verse 9, and out of one of them came the little horn. What was the little horn? Oh, we read about the little horn in chapter 7. Right? He says, um, verse eight, chapter 7, verse 8, he said, I saw a little horn come. Uh, now he's telling us where that little horn is going to come from. It's going to come from one of the four horns that came out of the goat. The goat had one very strong horn. It was very strong, but it is suddenly broken. Then from that came four. And from one of them came the little horn. Okay. And this little horn became very great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. The glorious land is the land of Israel. So this little horn 
is extending its influence toward the south, the regions of the southern south to it, towards the toward the east, and also toward the glorious land. Okay, interesting. Keep these thoughts in mind. As we go along, he's going to tell us what these things mean. Okay, let's go from verse 10, please. Its power raised to the heavens, where it attacked the heavens' army, throwing some of heavenly beings and some of the stars to the ground and tumbling them. It even challenged and commander of heaven's army by cancelling the daily sacrifice of offered to him and by destroying his temple. The army of heaven was trained trained from re responding to this rebellion. So the daily sacrifice was held and truth was overthrown. The horn succeed and everything it did. Hmm. Okay. Verse 13. Then I hear two holiness taking, talking to each other. One of them asked, How long will how long will the events of this vision last? How long will the rebellion that cause, causes this distractions stop the daily sacrifices? How long will the temple and heaven's army be trampled on? Hmm. Then others, hmm. then others replied, it, it will take 2,000 30 evenings and mornings, then the temple will be made right again. Hmm. Okay. Let's go on. Verse 15. As I, Daniel, was trying to understand the meaning of this vision, someone who looked like a man stood in front of me and I heard a human voice calling out from the Urai River. Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of his vision. Okay, somebody else, verse 17 on. I'll read. So he yeah, came ahead. near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on, on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, that the vision uh, refers to the time of the end. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the later time of the indigation indignation for at the appointment time the end shall be okay now he's going to give the meaning of the beasts verse 20 okay, okay. the ram which you saw having two horns they are the kingdom uh, kings of media and persia Yeah, and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. As for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. Verse 23 on, somebody could, till the end, somebody could read it, chapter 8. And in the later time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, 
a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall be destroyed shall destroy himself in his heart and by peace uh, shall destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of peace but he shall be broken with it without hand and the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true wherefore set thou up the vision for it shall be for many days and i daniel fainted and was sick certain days afterward i rose up and did the king king's business and i was astonished at the prison but none understood it mm. all right so there's a lot of information here we will cover some and then we'll continue this next week so let's see what so daniel saw this vision he saw a ram with two horns the ram the beasts of course they are representing kingdoms two horns the sec one horn was bigger than the other and the second one the bigger one came up after the small horn and this started in the east and was moving towards the west the west then from the west a goat comes very powerful very strong it has one horn growing very strong and it overpowers the ram and it destroys the horns of the ram but while it's very powerful it's moving east its big horn suddenly is broken and then from that come four horns and one of them is the little horn that was speaking pompous things against god and this time he tells us more things in verses 9 through uh, 14 of what, what what about this little horn this little horn is going to extend its influence towards the south towards the east and towards the glorious land that is the land of israel and then it's also going to speak things against the prince of the most high it's going to speak things against jesus christ himself and verse 11 chapter 8 verse 11 it's going to, this 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 leader this horn rep represents a leader this leader is going to stop the daily sacrifices and and the place is going to destroy the place of the sanctuary and uh, uh, he's going to once again repeat it in verse 12 he's going to oppose the daily sacrifices to to god and his truth is going to he's going to cast truth to the ground that means he's not going to be uh, he doesn't care about truth he's going to just speak deception lies and is repeating for a third time in verse 13 that the daily sacrifices will be stopped and he's going to make the sanctuary of god desolate destroy it and and then it's the verse 14 gives us a time period of uh, uh, 2300 mornings and evenings that would be about 1150 days and then he says gabriel gabriel says you know i'll help you understand what all this means and he tells us first of all in verse 17 this is with regards to the time of the end or these are things concerning the end times concerning the end times so he says daniel i want you to understand what's going to happen in the latter times the time of indignation means there is great trouble being uh, uh, happening so he starts in verse 20 he says the ram that you saw represents the kings of media and persia so now he's giving us the meaning the ram is media and persia so immediately you connect back to what you saw in chapter 7 and what you saw in chapter 2 the media and persia in chapter 2 was the the breast the chest of silver 
the media in Persia in chapter seven was the bear with ribs that came out leaning on one side. In chapter eight, it's the ram with two horns because media and Persia. The second is it does, the second one is longer. Persia was more powerful than the Medes, right? So that's he's saying that's the ram. Then after that, verse twenty-one, what you're seeing is the the goat is Greece, and sure enough, now Daniel did not live to see this, but sure enough, in history it was fulfilled. After the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks came into power. Greece came into power. And the first, the, the horn that you saw was the first king. That was Alexander the Great. So he was very powerful. And under Alexander the Great, the Greek empire expanded very fast, very fast. He reached all the way till Northern India. You know, Alexander the Great, he moved east. So it started in the west. So yeah, he started in the west and he moved east. And he was conquering, conquering. He came to the northern part of India. So that's he's talking about here, verse 21. The goat is Greece. The, the horn is the first king, which Alexander the Great. But what happened? Alexander the Great died when he was very young. He was, he was very powerful, but he died, I think, in his early 30s. He died. That's exactly what happened. And then when he died, his huge empire, the Greek empire, the Greek kingdom, was divided into four regions, four parts. Exactly happened. There were four leaders. So that's what he says in verse 22. Four kingdoms will arise, four parts. So basically it was the region around Greece, Turkey, Syria, and Egypt, four you know, broadly speaking, geographic regions, his kingdom was divided into four parts. Now, what do we know? He said that out of these four parts, I'm going back to verse nine, will come the little horn. So generally from these areas, he's saying Greece, Turkey, Syria, Egypt. Now, when the Greek kingdom or the Greece empire was broken into four parts. It didn't break. It wasn't about exactly the way today's national boundaries are like Greek and Turkey and Syria and Egypt. Uh, we are just mentioning these areas because today we can understand them, but the regions are around that. And what Daniel chapter eight says, eight and verse nine, out of one of these areas will come the little horn the king who is going to be the antichrist and he and that will happen verse 23 in the latter times so there's a time gap from the end of the greek empire to verse 23 there's a time gap why because he said in the latter times he said after this four kingdoms had this time you know four kingdoms come out he jumps and in the latter time this is going to happen. So let me pause here. We will explain chapter eight uh, once again. We'll pick up chapter eight once again next week because there's a lot of information here, details. And we have to put it all together with chapter two, what we saw in chapter five, chapter seven, put it all together. You all with me so far? It's clear. Clear, Pastor. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting, right? It's, it gets a lot of information is there, and then we put it all together. So it's, you, know, you get a clear picture of what, uh, what all of these things mean. Okay, let's pause here. We'll continue this uh, next week. Could somebody close in prayer and then we will dismiss. Okay, go ahead. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know who prayed in the opening, but Aaron, can you pray and close? We will dismiss. Sure, Pastor. Thank you, Lord, Father, for uh, giving us opportunity to learn the prophetic word, the prophetic book of Daniel, Father. Lord, as we uh... oh, 
we can't hear you, Aaron. Sorry. Okay. Father, we just come before. Father, we come before you. Turn one second, Father God, Father God. We want to just say thanking you, Father God. There is so much revelation, Father God. To, we are just studying, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, to your knowledge and understanding, Father God. So we are just receiving, Father God, your revelation, Book of Daniel, Father God. Thanking you, thanking you, Father God. The mighty Jesus name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, please go ahead, take your break, and then we will meet again in the next class. God bless. Thank you, sir.